Hello once again, it's Matthew here from Matthew North Music and welcome to the third part of my project about building a BBC microcomputer. If you haven't seen the first two parts, I will link them below. And also, if you like this kind of stuff, please think about liking and subscribing to this channel because every subscriber counts and it helps keeping the channel growing. Anyhow, let's get to the board and let's see what we've been up to. Here is our keyboard and in the last video you've seen some of the keys were missing and I have bought replacement used keycaps for all of the keys. Now there's two that I haven't replaced yet which are here in this bag and that's because the actual buttons here the ends have actually sheared off. I don't know how well you can see this but if I grab a, a key say the, uh, the number one key you pop it in place but it's got nothing to nothing to hold on to the actual thing is broken so I bought these new keycaps and they're used but they're good and they should do the job and I've just marked on the printed circuit board here and here these are the two switches that I need to replace so I'll get the uh, soldering iron out we'll uh, desolder those and we'll solder some new ones in here we have our new switches in and I can now pop our keycaps on so there goes number one and this is our tab button and we now have a complete keyboard again. I got all the single buttons from uh, eBay and I think they cost me two pounds each. The return key I got from an auction and that cost me a bit more. If we look at the return key though, you can see that's pointing at a different angle. It's sort of pointing downwards, whereas the rest are all slanting back. So I would suspect that's not actually a return key for a BBCB. That's more likely a return key for a master. Now another thing I bought was this cable here. Now this is slightly not the right size, it's uh, slightly too, too many wires. But I kind of bought this because I thought if you've got a nice long connector lead going from the keyboard to the main board, like that, then if it fits about here, then what you can do is you can actually move the board, at the keyboard out of the way while still being connected to the computer. So. I kind of think that's quite a good upgrade and also the pins fit very snugly on this cable whereas if you use the old style cable they do work loose after a, after a fashion and I actually did buy some of these and I've got these in my other BBC micros as well so we'll keep that there as well. Here we are today then this is the board as it stands and you may notice there's a few more things that have been added. The first thing I had to do is here. You can see there, there's a blue relay now instead of this relay, which was originally there. And the reason I took this relay out is because somebody left a comment on my last posting on YouTube mentioning this was the wrong pinout. So this relay would never work on this board. You may also notice that I now have a set of three sockets. And that's because I finally decided to admit defeat and I'm not probably ever going to use my original Issue 7 board again. I mean, I'll probably keep it. I may even hang it on the wall. Maybe if I ever do an exhibition, I can use it as a display item. But you can see the relay has gone, as has these two DIN sockets, the one that was here for the cassette and the one that was here for the modem. And if I ever did decide to try and get this board running, then I don't really need any of those anyway. So uh, yeah, but the other good thing about this board is that it's been really handy just for me to look for different components. I was looking for where some of the transistors went, like this one here and one here, and I couldn't automatically just spot it because you know sometimes I just don't spot these things. But just using a board like this as a comparison is really handy, and it's also handy to show you where the where the jumpers go and as to whether you're going to actually need a jumper or not because there's sockets places all around here for different types of jumpers but you never know whether you actually need to solder them in or not and just having a board like this means you've got a direct comparison well then here's something for the Econet, you need to have some of the resistors that have to be within two percent tolerance and I've got some 100Ks here that I need to use. And what I've done is I've actually got two different ways of measuring them, one on here and one on here. And they've come from the same batch. And according to this meter, 
one of them is slightly over and according to this meter one is slightly under now they're both saying that they're basically within spec but you should be aware that some cheap components particularly you know the, the stuff they bang out from china for not a lot of money you should measure each one if it's saying it needs to be within spec just so that you get the correct ones in or else Econet may not work. Now, I'm probably not even going to use Econet, but I thought I would just measure them anyway and just to check them because I've tried several different batches and there are variations in all of them. Here we go. This resistor, 97.89, that is out of spec and that came from the same packet as the other two. So you definitely need to check these resistors. Okay then, here's the state of play of the board at the moment and you can probably tell that there's a bit more on here now and actually the board actually has a, a fair bit of weight to it because the actual original BBC board here, even without all the main chips in, is actually quite heavy. But anyway, uh, the first thing I did was I had a kind of scattergun approach, I guess, to fitting resistors and capacitors but what I've ended up doing is I kind of started on the bottom left of the board and most of round here has all been populated now resistor wise and there are some capacitors as well and then I just kind of worked my way up to the board and here as you saw earlier when I was talking about it I've now got all the resistors in for the Econet section, even though I might not even use it. It's just nice that they're there. And some of these stick out a little bit because they are physically different sizes. And, but, you know, they're all electronically OK. And then if we move along to here, as I mentioned earlier, there was the relay and stuff. But then all, all these bits around here I've populated. And then if we tilt the camera around a bit more, a fair chunk of here has been populated. I haven't done everything. There's a couple of resistor values I haven't got. And it's kind of getting a bit cold now, so I'm kind of leaving that for another day. And that's the thing with this board. I don't want to just sit out here for hours on end. Just doing a little bit here and there is the way to really kind of work on one of these projects. And if I just show you this piece of paper, this is the bill of materials for what I'm doing and if you look at all the resistors there there's a fair number now that have been put in the board and if I tilt the camera up you can see I'm well on the way with a lot of the capacitors as well I do need to order some capacitors that I don't have it requires tantalums here that I don't have most of the ceramic and disc capacitors have been popped in and there'll be a few electrolytics as well so I will be ordering a few more bits later on but then when they all turn up, fingers crossed, I should have all the parts necessary for finishing off all of the board. I'm really pleased how this project's coming along now and I'm starting to see a little bit of an end in sight. Um, fingers crossed with a fair wind and some good solder, we should have a working BBC at some point in the future. Anyhow, hope you've enjoyed this video and stand by for the next one.